Chinatown is a very busy area of downtown Boston and is packed with Asian culture, from Asian bakeries to chess playing. It is never quiet or inactive. It is one of those communities that is one of the most historic uh, and most diverse communities in New England. You know, nationally, there's really, it's the third largest Chinatown outside of New York and DC. Rhode Island's Chinatown disappeared somewhere in the 1950s because of uh, changing demographics and gentrification and um, rebuilding. Uh, and so to be able to preserve this and for people to understand it better, I think is a wonderful opportunity. Well, I was, I was always creative as a kid, um, but uh, I actually ended up going to college at Brown University in Providence in their eight-year medical program. Um, I was going to be an orthopedic spine surgeon, but when I got there, I needed a major, and they encouraged us to be well-rounded, so um, I never got to take art in high school because I was too busy doubling up on math and science. I decided I was going to be an art major, and I, well, I said, okay, if I get into grad school, then I'll go. Otherwise, I'll just, I'll be a doctor, and I won't say anything else about it. But I got into NYU's MFA program, and I moved to New York City, and never left. What interested me about Ruth Puno, I think, was she is a very playful artist. And the concept of the year of the dog, or the zodiac sign, just the dog in general, is really, I wanted something playful. I wanted it playful like the dog is. Risa Puno is a New York City-based interactive installation artist. She creates sculptures that you can physically engage with to create a connection between you and the installation. With Risa's work, I think um, people want to stop and interact with it. There is a tactile uh, aspect to it that you want to spin it, that you want to feel it. Uh, it's made of cedar, so sometimes on really hot days you can smell the cedar wood as well. So there's all of these sensory aspects to this artwork that I think people really enjoy. For this, it was more about the experience that I wanted to give people. And so I, it always is, it always starts from the experience. And so I wanted it to be something that people could put their hands on, that they could um, have a say and they could read, they could change. And so I think the spinning blocks made the most sense, especially with the Chinese characters. Um, when you change the character in front of it or the character behind it, it changes the meaning. And so I wanted those poetic connections. So really I was more inspired by the playground tic-tac-toe um, spinning blocks. Since it had to have an overall structure, I liked the abacus feel. I thought that it would would be nice. It was like a nice connection both to like Chinese culture, but also there was like some wordplay with counting. I think I like a lot of a lot of things about this installation. I think one, this is the first time we've actually did an artwork in Chinatown that was really based off of the community voices and really encompassed what Chinatown uh, was and is currently, uh, generationally. And I just think that Risa did a wonderful job in connecting with community uh, and working with teens and the people that live or work or pass through the community in a way in which we've never done before. Um, there were lots of people involved. Uh, first of all, there's the Greenway. They are amazing. That was a huge turning point in the project for me because um, I met with the youth and they uh, really helped introduce me and welcome me to the Boston Chinatown community and really helped me understand what what that really means. The community is just not like a location or people who happen to be together about like the true spirit of it. The abacus tells the stories of young teens living in Chinatown and their memorable experiences they've had growing up there. The installation brings the community together by creating an interactive installation that the audience can spin and read the stories of youth from the community. When I met her, I thought she was really cool and down to earth because she really listened to all our opinions and wanted us to communicate about what we thought was like what's happening within the community. I get really excited by what people are interested in, what they're interested in keeping. Uh, for example, their memories or their traditions, um, things like that. Like I get really inspired by that. I have a thing for nostalgia and for play. Like I really like games. When you're a kid, you're not afraid to like touch things, and you're curious. And I, I want, I want to evoke that in other people. And so I think that's why I go toward like nostalgic things or or, or games or playful things.